Hi everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and today let's leave no dye behind. I have a lot of leftover dye powders uh, mixed with salt, sugar, and citric acid uh, from an episode of Dye Pot Weekly. This is the same dye bath that I used in that video. Um, and so in here, goodness, there were at least maybe six cups of water, four tablespoons of white vinegar, a lot of acid, plenty for us to do some more fun with speckling. But I barely used any of the dye uh, that I had mixed up. I think I started with a tablespoon of the various white powders and then added a quarter teaspoon of the Dharma acid dye in True Black or in bright aqua to those cups. And so I created some beautiful speckled yarn, but there's just a ton of dye left over. So let's go big. Let's do too much <laughs> and use up, maybe not all, because there's a lot of dye there, only 100 grams here, but let's go and use up a ton of this leftover dye. The yarn I have here is Knit Picks Hawthorne. It is 80% superwash, fine highland wool, 20% polyamide. It's high twist, and I really, really enjoy this yarn. All right, let's start with some salt. And I'm going in. I'm going for it. I'm going heavy. Uh, just adding a lot of this mixture. And you can see we are getting speckles here. Um, don't get me wrong, we are definitely getting some decent speckles. But uh, the difference is that uh, things with the salt seem to spread out a lot more than they do with the sugar or the citric acid. Now, this is non-iodized table salt, by the way. Um, I do know that some salts uh, are used to help as, as a leveling agent. So that way you can get more even coverage of the color on your yarn. And obviously that isn't quite what's going to be what we're going for today. We're adding lots of dye and lots of powder. Um, I have a feeling I'm going to be saving a lot of this for another project. But um, you can see we've got some beautiful, beautiful colors, and clearly the way I'm adding this in the pan is not going to give us like the perfect repeating colorway, but it looks really pretty. <laughs> okay, let's go ahead and add some more of this bright aqua. Uh, I'm not a fan of the salt, both in terms of the shape of the speckles, but also because like the color didn't mix as well in there. Um, and so there was like uneven coverage in the container itself. Therefore, I definitely, definitely prefer the um, using citric acid or sugar. I mean, I think in general, citric acid is the best thing to use, but there could be situations where you might not want to use citric acid for your speckles. And so that is some of the reason behind doing this project to begin with. And so with this salt and the black dye, I keep going in at times and then being like, I don't have any powder in here. Why not? But I do love doing this. It's very much like finger painting. Um, and so you can see I'm trying to go lighter with this black on top of the bright aqua. But this yarn is gonna have a ton of dimension overall. I'm gonna go back in with the bright aqua and go a little heavier shortly. But I'm happy with the amount of black and I love this pattern that we're seeing in the pan. But again, <laughs> I've got the skein laid out like this. And so uh, this is gonna be not super repeating uh, because, I mean, we have these at diagonals. Oops, I'm reducing the heat. And so like there's this corner over here that has 
Some will have longer sections of the color and some shorter. But however it is, we should end up creating something pretty fun. Uh, <laughs> oh goodness, there's just so much color. So much color. I'm going in with more of the bright aqua. And again, it's sort of like, it's so random. That's why the salt isn't my favorite, but clearly, I mean, it's working well here. I'm getting beautiful speckles. Um, I'm very happy with how everything is looking. And this is a beautiful, beautiful scene of yarn. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and let this sit for five minutes, then we'll come back, flip it over, and add more color to the other side. You guys, this is beautiful. <laughs> um, and it looks like a lot of the color has cleared, which is great. Um, but now let's flip it over. And actually, we did get reasonable penetration of color to the other side, probably because we were going so, so heavy. Um, the note would be that there are currently no speckles really on this side. We're seeing the, the color come through from like the blues and blacks uh, that we have been using. So I'm going to go through and add more color to this side. Will the pattern be different? Yep. <laughs> but I think that we'll just have some fun. I'm quickly realizing that I'm barely going to use all the dye. I don't even think I'm going to use all the dye from the salt mixtures, let alone the citric acid and sugar mixtures that I also have on hand. But it doesn't really matter because I like what we're creating and I enjoy this colorway a lot. While dyeing this yarn, it was a little frustrating. There were some times I would add the powder and I'd get a punch of color. And then other times when I'd add that color and then I'd sit, I'd wait, I'd wait, and the pigment just wasn't there. And so that inconsistency is the big reason why I personally wouldn't use salt um, just for speckling. But, um, I mean, there's no doubt that it is doing a good job. It's just, if I had other choices, that would not be my choice. I'm just pulling up, I think, the section that I think is going to require a tiny bit more coverage, and I'm going to take care of that quickly off camera. I'm now going to let this sit for 10 more minutes just to make sure that there's plenty of time for all that color to set, and then we'll be back. All right, I'm now turning off the heat, and the dye bath I think the dye bath is likely clear, but there isn't much of a bath. Yeah, I'm not seeing any color there, but I'm just gonna leave this here uh, to cool so then I can go and wash it. Let's wash our leave no dye behind yarn. Uh, and we definitely did not use up all that dye, but I did sort of cover the cups with some tin foil and set it in a Ziploc bag to use at a later date. Ooh, this colorway is beautiful and random and fun and oof, I love it. It is really fun to have the chance to dye one skein of yarn at a time in a pan. I mean, I do that on most of my videos, but it's really fun when there's not really an intent and I'm just gonna go for it and have fun. And we've got beautiful speckles here. Uh, less so in the bright aqua, but we've got some great black speckles. The salt, yeah, it's not my favorite. I like speckling with citric acid or even sugar better. Um, as for bleeding, we are seeing a tiny bit, eh, maybe not. Maybe there was like a hint of some bloom. Um, so I'm gonna keep rinsing for a while to make sure that we can remove as much of the blue as possible and to make sure that there's not like dye powder just sitting there somewhere. Um, but then I'll put it in the thin dryer and hang it up to dry. Here is the finished dry yarn. We got beautiful, beautiful speckled coverage here using salt. Salt is not my favorite powder to use to dilute acid dyes for speckling. 
but I didn't want to leave any of that dye behind. And we used it up to create something really beautiful. We layered so much dye on top of each other, but you can see some specks of the different colors on here. I have been getting some questions lately about using salt as a way to get reverse speckles on yarn. And while this isn't really the best example of that, I do have the dye mixed in with our salt, but clearly we're getting some regular type speckles here on the yarn. Uh, but I know in silk painting, you can use salt and that's a way to get some reverse speckles. But dyes absorb a little bit slower to silk than they do to wool. And so I'm not sure if the same thing would work on a sock blank or not. And I'm also not sure if you would need to do some kind of spray technique with the dyes or what. Because if you were spraying on a sock blank, you get resist. Anyway, I just have a lot to think about. And let me know more about this. Um, if you have any links, feel free to DM them to me because I would be interested in exploring that further. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I'm here to say that it's always worth to try something new and give something a shot. Or, well, at least it's worth it for me to do it, because then you can decide if you want to give this a shot or not. And that's one of the reasons why I sometimes like to go a little bit outside the box, uh, because sometimes things work really, really great, and sometimes they work fine, but Really, maybe you will only want to use it if you don't have any other options available. If you enjoy my experimental approach and would like to help support us on a more personal level, go and check out the Chemnitz Patreon. Um, you can find the link in the video description and iCard, but it's a great way to uh, contribute to everything that goes into producing these videos um, on a monthly basis, and there's some really cool perks that you should go and check out. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a comment below. And while you're at it, give it a thumbs up, like, subscribe, and turn on notifications. Sometimes I like to do a premiere of a video, which means that when it's airing for the very first time, there is a live chat associated with it. And whenever I do a premiere, I'm always in that live chat room to chat along with all of you. And so if you have notifications on, then YouTube will let you know uh, 30 minutes before one of those premieres start. Usually I reserve this for special events like the Summer Mini Skein mini series, but I truly enjoy getting to hang out with everyone so much that I might play around with this a little bit more in the future. Let me know what you think about that in the comments as well. Thank you so much for watching everyone.